Hi there guys and welcome to another video. This video shows how to download the Windows 11 inside a preview ISO with a Docker container and then install that image onto your Unraid server as a VM. Sounds interesting? Then let's get started. Well hi there guys and welcome to this another video. So unless you've been living under a rock, you probably heard that Microsoft has a new version of its Windows operating system. And this time they've decided not to go from like they did from Windows 8 to Windows 10, skipping Windows 9, they've decided to be really clever and just go from Windows 10 and call it Windows 11. Ok so they nailed the name, but what's the operating system actually like? If we look at Microsoft history, they often release a really good operating system and then follow it up with a really bad one. For those of you old enough to remember, do you remember Windows 98? That was released in June 1998. And it was a really great operating system. And then just a couple of years later, in September 2000, Microsoft gave us the awesome Windows Millennium. And yeah, I'm saying awesome sarcastically guys, it was really crap. And I still haven't forgiven Microsoft for that. I advised my boss, hey, there's a new operating system from Microsoft, Windows Millennium, and it's going to be awesome. We should upgrade all our computers to that. Well, that didn't work out too well for me. But after Windows Millennium, we did have the awesome Windows XP. That was a great OS, being released just over a year later, in October 2001. And for the next five years, people were really happy with Windows XP. And we thought that Microsoft were back on track and Windows Millennium was just a little blip. But no, at the end of 2006, Microsoft pulled another Millennium on us when they gave us Windows Vista. Now I know some people did like that OS, but the majority of us, I think we pretty much hated it and we wanted to stay on XP. So three years later, in October 2009, many people were sceptical about Windows 7 and didn't know what to expect. But Windows 7 turned out to be, in mine and many other people's opinion, the best Windows operating system Microsoft ever made. So with Windows 7 we got three good years with a decent operating system. But then in October 2012, Microsoft threw Windows 8 at us, and oh my god was that bad. So we had to wait another three years for our scheduled good operating system from the Microsoft One Good One Bad for Windows 10 to come out. And this first debuted at the end of July 2015. And it's the version of Windows that most of us are familiar with today. And yeah, whilst it has its faults, with things like Microsoft collecting loads of telemetry and that kind of thing, it isn't really a bad operating system. So now fast forward to 2021, and going by Microsoft's history, are we now due for a steaming pile of <laughs> with this operating system? Is Microsoft going to pull another millennium on us? Or are they going to break that trend? So what are people saying about it? Well a lot of people really like the new design. There's a totally new UI with all nice kind of rounded corners and that kind of thing. You could say taking a cue from Mac OS and Android operating systems. And talking about Android, well Windows 11 is going to have Android apps in the Microsoft Store. Now these apps on the Microsoft Store are going to be served through Amazon. This means that the Android apps available on the Microsoft Store will be far fewer than if Microsoft had decided to make the arrangement with Google itself and use Google's own Play Store. But I'm sure after Windows 11 is officially released that someone's going to find a way for us to be able to sideload apps without having to use the Microsoft Store at all. Now gaming on Windows 11 sounds like it's going to be pretty good, with features such as Auto HDR, which can convert a non-HDR game into an HDR game. Windows 11 brings Direct Storage, which is an API in DirectX which will bring much faster game load times, richer graphics and lower CPU use. So this is some of the good things being said about Windows 11. And if Microsoft are to be believed, well it's going to give us a better emotional state too. It is the details that enable you to get to that emotional space in connection with the product to be able to produce and get the work you need done. Well that does sound like a welcome change, because the only emotional state I have connected with Windows is rage. Rage when it blue screens, or an update's forced on me, making me feel like I just want to throw the computer out the window. How it all flows together is meant to bring you an incredible sense of calm. <laughs> okay, okay, don't overdo it mate. Any minute now you're going to start talking to it like it's your significant other. 
Now we talked about Windows 11 being beautiful on the outside, but it's also beautiful on the inside. Hang on one moment, one moment guys. Yeah, Vanessa, I do give you compliments like that guy gives Windows. You're beautiful on the inside and the outside too. And no, of course, I'd never find Windows more attractive than you. No way, no way. Right, okay, all joking apart now. We've heard the positives and what Microsoft are saying about their own system, but what's the general public's reaction? What are people like on Twitter saying? So it seems a really big concern for people as to whether or not this new operating system is actually going to better run on their PC. A lot of people have been running the compatibility tool to be told that their PC won't run it. And there are two things that have to be enabled for it to be able to run on a bare metal PC. And that's Secure Boot and TPM 2.0. Now I'm sure that the average normal computer user has probably got no idea what TPM actually is. So they certainly wouldn't know that sometimes it actually has to be enabled in the BIOS for it to even work at all. So I think the compatibility tool has been reporting PCs won't run it without giving any explanation as to why. And in fact Microsoft have actually pulled this tool now until further notice or later this year. But anyway, how do these minimum specs affect us when we're running Windows 11 in a VM? Well apparently these minimum specs don't apply if you're running a virtualized version of Windows. But we can't really say for sure if that's still going to be the case when Windows 11 is officially released. So for most of us the things we worry about running in a VM is Secure Boot and TPM. Well I don't think we need to worry because it's possible to boot in Secure Boot in a VM and QMU does have TPM functionality. In fact you can actually pass through the TPM device in your computer or you can even emulate it if you don't have a TPM device at all. Now currently on Unraid you should be able to actually pass through the TPM device to your VM if you want to. But at the moment we can't actually emulate a TPM device as the software TPM binary isn't part of Unraid. But that's obviously something that Lime Tech could add later should we need it. Ok so you've heard me talking about Windows 11 so how about now we go and install it. Ok so the Windows 11 Insider Preview is available from the Windows Update servers. And it is actually possible to download an ISO of Windows 11. At uupdump.net they provide tools for us to be able to do this. And so what I've done is I've put the Linux tools into a Docker container which will automatically download the Windows 11 ISO and put it in the ISO share on the server. So let's go across to the server now and get this done. So head on over to the Apps tab and do a search for Windows 11 UUP Dump. Then click on the little downward arrow to install the template. So the first thing we can set is the ISOs path. This is where the container is going to download the Windows image. And here you can see by default it's set to install it into the ISOs share into a folder called Windows. But obviously you can store it anywhere you want. If you just wanted it in the ISOs share on its own you could. But I prefer to have mine go into a separate folder called Windows. And the next variable you can change is here where it's default or custom. Default will just download the Windows 11 ISO. If you put it onto custom, this allows you to add different build scripts from uupdump.net and you just place them into the folder called custom inside the containers app data. But for most people you'd probably just want to leave this on default. And lastly you can choose the name that you want the ISO file to be called when it's copied to the ISO share. Ok so I'm leaving everything as the default settings and I click on to apply to pull down the container. So once it's downloaded click on to done, then we're going to need to go back to the docker tab. This container has no web UI so we want to go onto it and then go to logs and we can see what's happening. So it can take quite a while for it to download, it took 3 minutes for me for this part to be downloaded. I'm speeding up here just so you don't have to watch. You'll know when it's finished because at the bottom it will say all done, image is now in the ISO share called Windows 11 Insider ISO. So once you see that you can then close the window and now let's go across to the shares tab here and have a look in the ISO share and just double check that the Windows ISO is there. Ok good it's here so now we can go across to the settings tab here and go to VM manager because I just want to double check we've got the latest version of the Vert.io drivers. So if you haven't just click on download to download the newest one. And with that done now we can go across to the VMs tab and click on to add VM. We're going to base it off the Windows 10 template. Obviously the Windows 10 template only has a Windows 10 icon and there's no standard icons by default you can choose. To have a Windows 11 icon we're going to need some custom icons. So go back to the Apps tab and do a search for VM icons. Click on the arrow to download the template. 
Then everything here we can just leave as default, we don't need to change anything, then just click on to apply, that will pull down the container and download some new icons. So now we can just click on to done and then go back to the VMs tab and click on to add VM. Choose the Windows 10 template, obviously we're going to call it Windows 11 and now we can choose the icon for Windows 11. If we scroll right down it will be near the bottom somewhere. Ok there it is so click on to it. And next we can choose how many cores and how much memory we want. Choose how much you want to allocate to your VM. Now the next thing here is the machine type. By default it's set for i440FX. I prefer to use Q35 myself. And yeah, BIOS leave it on OVMF. Now install ISO, obviously you want to browse to where our ISO is. Here's mine, the Windows 11 ISO. And here VertIO drivers, choose the latest ones that you downloaded earlier on. Next we need to choose the size of our primary VDisk. I'm going to set 100 gigs for mine. And you can have the VDisk type as RAW or QCOW2. However, I prefer QCOW2, so that's what I'm going to use here. And for graphics, I'm going to leave it as VNC for the time being. Later we'll come back and add a GPU, but for now let's click on Create. That will automatically start the VM and open VNC. If you look there, it says press any key to boot, so quickly press a key before that message goes. And that will start booting the install media. Here we just choose our language and then click Next. Click on to Install Now. I don't have a product key, so just click on I don't have a product key and click Next. Agree to the license, click Next. Now we need to click on to custom install. It's normal not to see any disks here, just click load driver and then browse and then go to the VertIO disk here on the E drive. Go down to the bottom and VIO store here, choose Windows 10 and then AMD64. With that done click OK and next. We can see the hard drive now highlighted, just click on to next and then just wait for this part to install. So let's speed up the video to get through this part quickly. Ok and so here we are, Windows 11 is all installed. So now we just need to go through the setup wizard, first choosing our language. And now your keyboard method, click yes. Click skip if you don't want a second keyboard layout. Now click on to I don't have internet, then continue with limited setup. This will allow us to create a local account, which I'm going to do now by popping in a username and a password. Next we need to fill in some boring security questions, so let's speed through that. And here with Microsoft privacy settings, I'm going to disagree with everything I possibly can here. And so with that done, we're almost there. We just have to go through the hi, welcome message, and we're getting a few things ready for you. Right, OK, so here we are, booted into Windows 11's desktop. OK, so now we need to load the rest of the VertIO drivers. So I'm going to click onto the file browser. Right click this PC, go to properties, then I'm going to scroll down to near the bottom of this box and click on to device manager. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to install the display adapter here. So I'm going to right click it and then click update driver. Then I'm going to browse my computer, and then browse to the VertIO disk. This is the E drive here. I don't need to select any subfolders, I'm just going to click the root of it and click OK and then next and then install the display adapter. This installs the QXL display adapter, which will give us better graphics. Now we're going to do exactly the same for these other three devices. Right click and update the driver, choose the VertIO disk and install all of these drivers. OK, so next we want to browse to the VertIO disk itself and then choose the guest agent folder and install this one here, the x86-64 version. So with that done, let's close this window here. And now click on the search icon here and I'm going to type power. Then in the power and sleep settings, under energy and performance, click it up to best performance. Put sleep onto never, and also never for the monitor shutting down. And actually if we go to additional power settings, we can set the power settings onto performance. If we click on here where it says show additional plans, just check the high performance setting here. OK, so with that done, let's try browsing the internet. Let's go onto YouTube, the best channel in the world, Space Invader 1. OK, so it's all working fine, the internet's working OK, and even playing a bit of video. But yeah, I know what you're all thinking, does this work with the graphics card pass through? Well, the quick answer is yes, and the long answer is let's see. So let's do the long answer, and let's see it working. So with the VM shut down, let's go back to the VMs tab, and then edit the template. So scrolling down to the graphics section here, I'm going to add the 3080 here, and obviously its sound counterpart. 
I'm not going to add any other hardware myself, but obviously you could pass through USB devices or a USB controller. I'm going to start up the VM. I've got Splashtop installed on this VM already, so I'm going to go across to there so we can record the screen. So I'm just going to pop in my password and then log in. I'm going to quickly speed through installing the NVIDIA graphics driver. So after the NVIDIA driver is actually installed, I'm going to have to reboot the VM, after which I'm going to go straight into Steam and just quickly try out a game. And the game of choice for today is Black Mesa. Now I can't really play it very well because I'm using Splashtop and mouse control is really terrible through Splashtop with games. But you can see the game's working fine. Any minute now it's all going to go wrong when I move the mouse. There we are, I can't move anymore, but you got the idea. The GPU's working fine pass through in Windows 11. Well guys, so that brings us to the end of this video. Now I'd be really interested to read your comments on what you think about Windows 11. Do you like it? Do you hate it? You're going to want to stick with Windows 10. And what do you think about Microsoft's minimum specs for Windows 11? I don't think they're going to stick with the TPM being enforced. I think that's probably going to be optional. I don't know, we'll see when the time comes. Anyway guys, it's time for me to go now, but before I do, I just want to give a huge thank you to all of my Patreons and supporters out there. Thank you so much guys for all of your support. I really, really do appreciate your support. Well guys, I hope you enjoyed this video and you found it useful. If you did, then please hit the like button, give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Anyway guys, it's time for me to go now, but whatever you're up to for the rest of the day, I hope it's good and I'll catch you in the next video.